In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to give you some tips on how to keyframe effects. Oftentimes, we think of keyframing as something that's limited to what we do to the frames in a video clip, but you can do it with an effect as well. Sometimes you want to use it at the beginning of an effect or the end, or when you blend effects, keyframes can add a lot. So we'll give you some tips in this particular exercise. I have on the screen a clip of a young woman driving a convertible down a road. And let's assume that we want to begin to add an effect and then keyframe it. So I'll pause that and we'll go to our effect room. I can click on the FX or press the F4 key. That gets into all my effects. I'm going to choose among my favorites. I'm going to take the effect for rain, drop it down on an effect track that I've created below my main track, and then we're going to stretch it to fit the length of the clip. And if we don't do anything, we have the default effect of rain coming down uh, during the course of the entire clip. Now what I might want to do is change the variation inside the rain. How can I do that? I'm going to highlight the effect, my rain effect, and click on the Modify button above the timeline. I'll need a little more screen space here. And what I will see is I have several different sliders. Now I can modify any of these, the density, the direction, uh, or the 3D depth. Now we're not working in a 3D atmosphere, so I won't use any of the 3D tools. But that will affect the entire clip. What if I want the rain to, to appear to start and stop become heavy and light in the course of the effect being on the screen. I can keyframe it. I'll click on the keyframe button at the bottom. Now if you're not used to keyframing, basically what keyframing does is it controls the variables that you see on the left over time. Wherever the time marker is, I can change the value of the density, direction, or 3D depth of the rain. And so I can make it adjust over time. And if I set two keyframes, it will automatically increase or decrease between those two markers. So I'll move the keyframe marker here over to the left side, the time marker. And I can set a keyframe in one of two ways. I can take any one of these values and click the diamond. When I click the diamond, it will add a keyframe. Or if I have moved my time indicator over, and I vary the slider from what it was at the previous location, the, the minute I begin to touch my slider, it will create a keyframe. So let's, let's move over here and we'll generate one that's 200. We'll move over here and I'll add another one. Now if I click the diamond here, it will repeat the value that already was there. So from this moment in time to this moment in time, the density value will be 200. I'm going to move over here and we'll drop it down to somewhere around 100. And then we'll move it back over here and we'll move it up to 200 again. We likewise could change the direction. Now if you have two values that you're changing, you don't have to have them change at the same moment in time. But if I want to, what I can do is I can use the left and right arrow where I've already set my density. And that will move from keyframe to keyframe. So if I want this one to change at the same time on direction, all I need to do is again move the keyframe that will set one. And now my direction is 111 here. I could move to the previous keyframe on the prior value of density and set something here, but I can also simply move in the open space and say in this location, I'm at this moment in time, I'm going to have the density uh, or direction be 150. And if you want to know the value of each of these in terms of time, simply look at the time indicator below the preview screen. So now at 5 seconds and 20 frames, my direction value is 148. If I move the right arrow, now we're at 12 seconds, 26 frames. The value is 111. And you can also take a keyframe and drag it and move it. 
uh, and slide it on farther. So you can set them, adjust them, you can delete them, um, anything you like. So let's look and see what we have here. We played with a couple of the values on the keyframe for the rain and see how it looks a little more natural now. And we'll go ahead and play it. And here we have it coming down and then it gets very, very light. Almost goes away. And then in a few moments it will speed up again. So it's a bit of a, a drizzle here. And then the clip will end with it being uh, somewhat light again. So you can vary it in ways that seem more natural. Now let's look at the special effect that has nothing to do with weather. I'm going to delete the rain and we'll go ahead and I'm going to click back up to all content. And let's take a different one, quite a bit different one. I'm, I have one called magnify. I take the magnifier and I'll drag and drop it on my effect track and I'll stretch it out to the length of the clip. And let's see what the magnifier does if I don't keyframe it. It gives me a magnification of the center of the screen at a certain percentage and it has a frame around it. And it's kind of neat because in this case it gives me a look in the rear view mirror. So that's what the magnifier does. So I'm going to stop this and we'll modify it. We'll keyframe it. So let's say we want to click on keyframe here. I have all these values now that I can modify just for magnifier. I can change the aspect ratio, the center position. I can change the width of the frame, the magnifying rate, and the magnifying size. So let's start out at the beginning and take the magnifying size and make it maybe slightly smaller. Let's go 27%. And then at the end, I'm going to increase it back up to what it started at, which is 40%. I'll change another one just for fun. Well, let's take the um, let's take the value of the frame feather, and it's at two percent was the default. Uh, let's make it uh, like 19%, a little more fuzzy here. But let's just for fun go to the beginning and make it one or two very sharp. And so you can change any value in the keyframe, any combination of values, as often as you want. We can change the frame color for the whole thing, or we can make it change color from beginning to end, all these other variations. We won't uh, deal with all the details here. We're just illustrating what you can do with keyframing. So we'll go back and I'll uh, enlarge my screen We'll go ahead and play the clip. And now we see it slightly grow as we go from uh, roughly 20% to 40% magnification in the center. So these are two very quick illustrations of how to take an effect in from your effect room and keyframe it so the parameters of the effect change over time.